Hey everybody, it's Janice with Creating Through Chaos, and we're going to start this project off today with this spindle that I got off of a chair that I had in my yard that ended up falling apart from being outside in the winter. So it was already red, so I'm just going to take and I'm going to add a coat of antique white to it, and then I'm going to let that dry. Once that's dry, I'm going to sand off some of it to show back some of that red. And you don't have to sand it fully, just enough to make it look distressed and pull back some of that red. Next, I took a piece of cardboard that I cut a little bit smaller than the spindle and two pieces of fabric, and this is homespun, to go over the cardboard. So I cut it just a little bit bigger than the cardboard. I'm making sure that it fits. Next, I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I am going to cover the cardboard in the Mod Podge. And I'm just going to do a nice thick coat and then flip it over and lay it on one of my pieces of fabric. And then kind of smooth it out, make sure that it's stuck well. And then I'm going to add another coat of Mod Podge on this side. Again, a nice thick coat, making sure I got in all those grooves of the cardboard. And then I'm going to do around all of the edges of my fabric and just go all the way around making sure that I have plenty of Mod Podge on here it will all dry and it dries clear then I'm going to lay that other piece of fabric over the top of that and then I'm just going to smooth that all out and make sure that those edges are all stuck so that that Mod Podge adheres and holds them smooth it all out make sure I don't have any wrinkles and that I didn't miss any spots around the edges with the Mod Podge. And I checked the other side just to make sure that that was all lined up and making sure that everything was all lined up. And then I am going to set that aside for a few minutes, let it fully dry. Next, I'm going to take a piece of muslin that I cut out. And this is a little bit smaller than the pieces of fabric that I put on the cardboard. I'm going to lay this on my mat. And I'm going to put this stencil right on top. I got the stencil at Hobby Lobby. Then I'm going to take a green color, and it's just a forest green, I believe. And I'm going to stencil that saying onto my muslin. So I'm just going to use a sponge damper, go very slow, light amounts of paint. You don't want a whole lot of bleeding or any bleeding if you can prevent it. And I just kind of went around the whole thing over and over again. Sometimes you have to do the same spot several times because you have hardly any paint on your brush or on your pouncer. And then I just did that through the whole thing. And then here comes the moment of truth when you peel up your stencil and actually see how it came out. And ooh, it came out really, really good. Minus the few darker spots, but that's okay because I think it just adds to the rustic vibe of the whole thing. Next, I'm going to take that and I'm going to Mod Podge that onto this cardboard fabric frame we sort of made. So I'm going to kind of even it into the center and then I'm going to just peel up one side of it and Mod Podge down on that and then lay it back down so I'm not moving it around a whole lot or trying to find the square you know, and making sure I don't get Mod Podge all over everything else. So as you can see, I just kind of rolled back one side. I'm going to put the Mod Podge on that side. Making sure that I use enough so that it sticks well. Kind of following where I thought that it would be. And then just lay that back down over it. Kind of smoothed it out. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. And then if you have to, you can go back in and get all of your edges and make sure that it is all atta attached well. Next, I am going to take this, I don't even know, it's like a, a twine burlap ribbon. It's kind of like got like a window pane look. It came in at Hobby Lobby in the scrapbook section. It was actually on like a piece of cardboard. So I'm going to kind of fold that over and this is going to be the hanger. I'm going to see where about I want it hung so I make sure that I get it centered and figure out where I want each piece. And then I am going to attach that with some hot glue. 
So I'm just going to kind of fold the fabric over, put a little hot glue, and then lay my ribbon on there. And then fold it over on this side, making sure that the fabric is even. And then hot glue it again. And then I'm going to repeat the process for the other hanger as well. So this is going to be the loops that are going to hold it onto our dowel or a spindle. Next, I found these two cute little buttons in my stash, and I'm going to use those to put right on those little hangers. And then finally, I'm, I have this, it's like a bell garland, and it's from Dollar Tree, I believe. And I'm just going to kind of pull off a large piece of that. And it already has the bells all attached, and it's like a wired garland. I'm going to pull off a big piece of that and then cut it down. And then I'm just going to wrap it around the ends of the dowel, and this is going to be our hanger. Or my spindle, I should say. But you could use a dowel. So I, you know, if you don't have any spindles, a dowel would be perfect for this. I just happen to have this spindle. And that is it. This project is finished. I used almost all things that I had on hand. Cardboard, a spindle, some fabric, a stencil. We all have a lot of those on hand. I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope it inspires you to make one. And as always, don't forget to spread the chaos.